Welcome to the house. God bless you.
song of praise. He said, He despised him for years. For he is El Shaddai. Yes. Hallelujah. Somebody say El Shaddai. El Shaddai. Jesus. Hallelujah. And his great works. And we worship him. And we give his name the praise. For who he is.
Thank you, Lord. But we are so glad that we have this great man of God. Thank you, Jesus. Who will preach, who will prophesy, yeah. who will speak a word to the hearts and minds of the people. Man. Oh, God, am I talking about your pastor? My God. Yes, Lord God. Jesus. And we know that he's going to come forth with a great and awesome word. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's receive and we are praying for this man of God. Amen. They may tell you to sit back and relax, but the devil is a liar. Yeah, yeah. We don't sit back. My God. From the word. I'm So we expect the word to take us out. Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. 
name. The rising of the sun. So we're going down to say, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Yes. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We honor the Lord Jesus Christ for his goodness and his mercy toward us. And that he saw fit to allow us to live one more day. Amen. Amen. We honor the Lord for extending life and extending grace and extending mercy unto us. And for that cause, the scripture says, let everything that have breath praise, praise ye the Lord. The Lord. Amen. I'm so glad to be among the living today. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We honor the Lord for all the things yes. that he's done. Give honor to your pastor, the angel of this house, and the person of Pastor Evans. The yes, yes. Amen. Yeah. The shepherd. Yes. The Thank you to praise the Lord for the extended invitation to come to minister in this yes. sacred place. And we count it a privilege and an honor to be here. Amen. For all the precious sins of God that are part of this body, all of the ministering brethren that stand to help minister alongside your pastor. We honor you. In my name, person by person. Yes, Lord. We honor to all the saints of God and the company you need from the Harvard Restoration Church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We honor the Lord and our new pastor, Pastor David Willis. Amen. Jesus. I don't plan to be before you long, but I do plan to give you what thus saith the Lord. Hallelujah. And, um, I believe that there is a word from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And um, I'll call your attention to quite a few passages of scriptures, and we're going to do quite a bit of reading, and then I'm going to get into the word of the Lord and, and get on out of your way. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. And, uh, let's put our hands together for that wonderful praise. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Yes. Wonderful. Lord, this day. I call your attention to the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, verse number one. And then I'm going to call your attention to the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter, verse number 15. And then we'll conclude our reading the book of 2 Kings, the 23rd chapter, read verses number one through. Verse number 15. Book of Romans, 12th chapter. Amen. Praise the Lord, chapter 12, verse number 1. Very familiar passage of scripture. And, um, and I pray that it ministers to your heart and mind this day. Romans, 12th chapter, verse number 1. Scripture reads on this wise, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And then we're going to call your attention to the book of Hebrews, the 13th chapter. Amen. We're going to be reading in verse number amen, 15. And the word of the Lord reads on this wise, and it says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Yes. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. To the book of 2 Kings, 23rd chapter. Verse 1 through verse 5, 15 rather, is where we will conclude our reading. 
for this afternoon. Second Kings 23. Verse number one through verse number 15. And the king said, and they gathered unto him all of the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem. And the king went up into the house of the Lord and all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem with them. And the priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great. And he read in their ears all the words of the book of the covenant which was found in the house of the Lord. And the king stood up by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart and all their soul to perform the words of the covenant that were written in the book and all the people stood to the covenant. The king commanded Hilkiah the high priest, the priests of the second order and the keepers of the door to bring out of the temple of the Lord all the vessels that were made for Baal, for the groom, for all the hosts of heaven. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the fields of kindred, and carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the idolatrous priests, and the kings of Judah ordained to burn incense, in the high places in the city of Judah and the places round about Jerusalem. There also they burned incense un also them that burned incense unto Baal, to the sun, and to the moon, and to the planets, and to all the hosts of heaven. And he brought out the grooves from the house of the Lord without Jerusalem unto the brook kindred and burned it at the brook kindred and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder there all upon the graves of the children of the people and he break down the houses of the sodomites that were by the house of the Lord where the women wooed hangers for the groove and he brought all the priests out of the cities of Judah and defiled the high places where the priests had burnt incense right, from Geba to Beersheba and break down the high places of the gates that were in the entering in of the gate of Joshua, the governor of the city, which were, which were on a man's left hand at the gate of the city. Nevertheless, the priests of the high places came not up to the altar of the Lord in Jerusalem, but they did eat of the unleavened bread among their brethren. And he defiled Tobit, which is in the valley of the children of Hinnom, that no man might take his son or his daughter to pass through the fire to Molech. And he took away the horses that the king of Judah had given to the son at the entering in of the house of the Lord by the chamber of Nathan Melech, the chamberlain, which was in the suburbs and burned the chariots of the sun with fire. And the altars that were on the top of the upper chamber of Ahaz, which the king of Judah had made, and the altars which Manassas had made in the two courts of the house of the Lord, did the king beat down and break them down from thence and cast the dust of them into the brook of kindred. And the high places that were before Jerusalem, which were on the right hand of the Mount of Corruption, which Solomon, the king of Israel, had built it for Ashtaroth, the abomination of the Zodians, and the Kishma, and the Kish, and the Chemosh, the abomination of the Mo Moabites, and for Milcom, the abomination of the children of Ammon, that the king defiled, and he break in pieces the images, and cut down the grooves, and filled their places with the bones of men. Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel, in the high place which Jer Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, who made Israel to sit, had made, 
both that altar and the high place, he break down and burn the high place and stamped it small to power and burned the groove. Because your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, no more, no more corrupted altars. Corrupted altars. Amen. 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 No Thank you, Jesus. No more corrupted altars. Altars. Amen. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We love you. We give you name all glory, honor, and praise. We ask you, oh Lord, that you will have your way in the midst of your people. Touch, heal, and deliver. And call us set free as only you can. Have thine own way. And we'll give you name all glory, honor, and praise. And it's in Jesus' name that we do pray and we all shout. Amen. Amen. The glory of God. Hallelujah. Israel is a very unique people. Israel is considered the chosen of God. They, according to the scripture, they are called God's elect. Precious. Israel, out of all of the other nations, were hand-chosen by to be his people. Every other nation was worshipers of false gods. They had no identity, therefore they were called the Gentiles, which simply means the other nation. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Uh but Israel was called by name. Amen. Everybody else that worshiped and served other gods were just known as the other nation. Mm -hmm. There is a blessing to be chosen by God. Amen. Amen. It is a wonderful thing to be chosen by God. Oh, yes. It is a beautiful thing to be called God's prized possession. Amen. Because if you don't belong to anybody else. You want to be able to be glad to belong to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God is so wonderful. Yes. That if my mama or if my daddy left me, I would want the Lord to raise me up. Yes, yes. I would want to be able to call the Lord my father. Yes. Israel had that kind of relationship with God. Yes. They were just not a people, but they were the people of Almighty God. That's right. God would show them his mighty power. They would experience God in a way that no one else had ever experienced God. Mm hmm Miracles, yes. signs, wonders, visitations from God, angelic presentation from God. God would speak and they would hear his voice. Yes. They would feel God moving and shaking the very foundations yes. of the earth. Right. They experienced God like no other Amen. But Israel got to a place where they started mingling. Mm. They started intertwining themselves with the other nations. And when they began to entwine themselves with the other nations, God would always warn them. When you go into the land among these people, learn not the ways of the heathen. Right. Amen. You tell them, do not practice what they practice. Do not do what they do. Do not participate in the things that they participate in. God wants Israel to be separate. Yes, yes, yes. God wants Israel to be peculiar. Yes, God yes. wanted Israel to be unique and distinct. God wanted Israel to be a reflection of him. Amen, yes. amen, 
Amen. But Israel didn't want to be peculiar. My Israel Lord. did not want to be distinct. Israel did not want their own identity. And they messed up because when everybody else had a king, Jesus, Jesus, they wanted to. Wanted a king. Yeah. And so they messed around. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And messed around and got a king in whom God had rejected. Yeah. God never wanted them to have a king like the other nations because God was their king. Amen. Amen. Lord Israel That's right. wanted to be just like the other nations. Yeah. And so they found themselves in very strange and peculiar situations and circumstances to the point that they found themselves indulging and eating and drinking and doing things that the others were doing that were against the commands of God. Yes. Israel found themselves building altars. My Lord. Altars that were in that day and age they were meant to symbolize whom you were devoted to and you would come and you would sacrifice upon the altar. Yeah. You would lay things upon the altar that were precious in order to present it to your God in order to show him that you were grateful yeah. to be his and that he was yours. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You would offer sacrifice on the altar that was pleasing unto God and then God would respond the altar to let you know he was pleased with your sacrifice. Yeah, it was at that. the altar that the presence of the Lord would be manifested. It was at the altar that the glory of the Lord was shown. It was at the altar that the power of God was yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It was at the altar. It was at the altar that the fire of God oh, yes. would come down and consume the sacrifice. Yes. It was at the altar that God would let whether or not he was pleased or displeased with you. Let me hold it close. It was at the altar. But Israel messed up. Mm. And Israel started doing something that God got displeased with. And brothers and sisters, as I was reading through the Kings, hallelujah, Second Kings 23, hallelujah, verse number Verse number 15, I started noticing things in the text, hallelujah, that got Israel in trouble. Did y'all pay attention to the pattern, hallelujah, of the scripture? Everywhere you saw the altar of the Lord and the house of the Lord, you always seen in connection with it another altar. Jesus. Hallelujah. 
three deities. Mother, I'm at a place now in the house of God where just because folk talking about Jesus and shouting and hooping and hollering and talking about God, I'll be sitting there scratching my head wondering what God are you talking about? My what God. Jesus are you referencing? My you God. Be of God that there's another Jesus being Two brothers. 
Teach it. That came out of the same house. Yeah. Had the same mother and father. Supposed to be serving the same God. Yeah. I but one had a devout and corrupt offering. Yeah. While the other one had a pure sacrifice. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Lord. So just because we have the same space right. and in the same place. Doesn't mean that we're giving God acceptable. Amen. Amen. So your altar is going to be the determining factor between, hallelujah, that which is holy and that which is unholy. Hallelujah. Because based upon what you put on there, Jesus. Lord Jesus. and whether or not God responds. Mm. I love the altar because the altar isn't one sided. Amen. The altar doesn't just allow you to present whatever you want to and say I'm good. After you present it and lay it on the altar, then God has to respond. Amen, amen. Yes, yes, yes. And so what would happen is, is that if you lay it on the altar, the thing that was pleasing to God, the heavens would open. Yes. Fire would fall. And the fire would consume it. The sacrifice. It would burn it up. And when that was done visibly, it was God's sign that I'm pleased yeah. Yeah. with what you put on the altar. And I don't have time to go into all the details, how many of the altar, because the altar was actually so deep in revelation yeah. that sometimes we miss it because you couldn't even build the altar any kind of way. Yeah. You couldn't even use any kind of thing to build it. God gave specific so before you could even get the sacrifice, you had to make sure the altar was even prepared properly. Then once the altar was prepared properly, then the Lord said, the, the sacrifice that I want you to bring, I want you to go into your cattle, into your flock, and I want you to get the best. And what I want you to do, I want you to examine it. I want you to look it over. I want you to go from here. You know, have, have anybody ever rented a car? Yes. And you go to the rental car place to rent the car, and you got to do a walkthrough, hallelujah, with the, with the office. And, and the purpose of the walkthrough to see, is to see if there's any blemishes on the car. Uh -huh. So you can let them know, look at that dent, so they won't charge you. Right. Up the car, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, the Holy Ghost and the Spirit. My God. You got to get a sacrifice, and you got to walk around. My you God. Make sure ain't no blemish in it. Yeah. Make sure ain't no corruption in it. Jesus. Make sure that that thing is undefiled. Hallelujah. And Israel got real trifling. And Israel started sacrificing on the altar to seize cattle. My God. Jesus. And then they're going to give it to God and say, here, take this. They went and got lame, crippled animals. Went and got the worst of the worst. And came and laid it on God's altar. You know that kind of praise you got when you get off work? Jesus. Hallelujah. My you know God. You when you're mad at your spouse, they ain't going to talk to you. Again. You know that kind of offering that you get? Hallelujah. When your children are following your nerves. Teach it. They went in there and they started getting all of the devout stuff. Mm -hmm. All of the corrupted calf. Mm -hmm. And laying it on God's altar. My Lord. And God started rejecting mm -hmm. what they were giving. And then folks started looking at God like he was the one with the problem. Mm -hmm. When it was you that was responsible for getting the sacrifice. So God said, I'm going to wait with all that type of stuff, right? I'm not, I'm not even going to give you an opportunity to choose what kind of cattle to pick. I want you now to give a different type of sacrifice. Mm. So I'm about to shut down this whole ceremonial routine that you got. Uh -huh. I ain't even going to give you no loophole. I ain't even going to give you no hallelujah time to go and figure things out. What I want now is 
I want your body. Turn 
turned our houses of worship into the mountains of corruption. And we think that God is honoring what we're doing. And everything that we're doing is in vain. I'm done. That's the reason why the Lord said it. <laughs> Come on, preacher. I'm really done. That's why the Lord said In that day. Yes. They shall say unto me. Yes. Lord, Lord. Did not we prophesy in your name? Did not we cast out devils in your name? Did not we do many wonderful works in your name? And church, can I submit something to you? It's not the world casting out devils, it's us. Jesus. It ain't the world prophesying, it's us. Amen. It ain't the world doing the wonderful works, it's us. Amen. So Jesus wasn't talking to the world. Uh huh. He was talking to the church. Amen. And he said, in that day, they're going to say unto me, Lord, Lord. That word, Lord, means master. Yes. Taking ownership of the one that you're supposed to belong to. Did not redo these things. But he said, I'm going to look at them, and I shall profess unto them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. Never knew you. But we were prophesying, though. Mm. We were casting out devils, though. Mm. We were doing many wonderful works, but he does not identify. We are. Because our altar was corrupted. Yes. Lord, have mercy on our souls. Jesus. If we stand before God, we've corrupted altars. Jesus. Standing all over the building. God's word for us today is no more. No more corrupted altars. such a great anointing in this place. And I know you came to sit back and put me to work. I think the Holy Ghost want to flip the script. Mm. I feel so anointed. I want you to lay hands on your people. And I hear the Lord say that as you begin to lay hands upon your people, there is going to be a turning Uh huh. That's when we are turning. Yes. In the hearts of God's people. My Lord, thank you, Lord. And what's going to happen in that moment is what the king did. Those altars that are not supposed to be there, when your pastor laid hands on you spiritually, he's going to start tearing down. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus. Those altars Thank down you. Thank you. In your heart that you erected, that some of you don't even know you erected. That's right. Some of your altars came from past trauma. Yes, yes. Past experiences. Some of your altars are generational. Yes. But I have the Holy Ghost saying that when he lays hands on you, those altars are coming down. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! Yes! Hallelujah! Yes! Oh, 
Stand up for me. I heard the Holy Ghost say the thing that tried to break you, he just broke it. Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. 